because we set the jaws with a little bit of 3 8 bar between them, 3 8 square, then we should be able to capture a little bit of round for our tongs. Now you might not hold it well, you can see I've got a gap in the jaw here, but I've got enough to make my initial bend. Thereafter, everything is going to be between those lips on the end. So it's just the initial bend of the chain, it's going to be right there. All you want is just a, a shallow grip, but a, a, enough to hold it. Before I start getting into making chain, I want to just look at um, some of the tooling and get a, a, a cold visual on what's going on. Here's my 6 inch length, I'm going to mark about the middle. I know I want to bend somewhere in there. So I'm going to take the tongs that I have and I can see the end of my jaw is roughly at the top end of my bend, bend which is fine. It doesn't matter where it is, I've just got to know where it is. When I come out of the fire, I'm just going to bury my inch and a half or so, two inches, whatever that distance is, and leave my inch and a half about here. And I'm just trying to put a visual record on that. And I'm going to bend, bring it around, um, somewhere in that chalk mark. And hopefully that will make a uniform U shape. Come out, I'm going to leave my inch and a half or so, and I'm just going to bend that around and see what sort of U shape I get. Now it's important to me when I look at this, I can see that I didn't put enough in. I have a longer leg here and a shorter leg here. So now I've got to correct that. So next time I'm going to put a little more of the stock into the Pritchell hole. If you're worried about it, what you can do of course is use something like your hammer as a depth stop. Well, you're right, it might not be exactly the same width as a hammer, but you'll know roughly where it is and then you can bend it. So you're just using that as a rule. This is what I want to finish up with once I've made my initial bend. If I need to correct it, I can work here or work on the edge of the anvil, whichever is important to me, uh, to get that U shape. And these need to be about the same place. From there, I'm going to work here right on the corner of the anvil, corner of the step. You notice I'm coming out about 45 degrees. Let's have another look at that. When I'm ready to make my chain step scarf, I'm going to come here and you'll notice I've got the outside corner in line with the step and I've got the chain material at about a 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit and then I'm going to pivot as I bring material in. It's going to come out, edge of the stock in line with the edge of the anvil here and I'm going to hit it. And that's going to make a step and I'm going to pivot off this back side as I slowly rotate, you can see I pull that sort of lozenge shape out towards the centre of the U. I'm going to park the outside corner in line with the step, give it a blow, pivot off this inside corner here as I rotate the stock around, thin the edge, and you'll notice I've got, I did it from opposite sides, and I have the scarf here, thickest on the outside, thinnest on the inside, and those need to be overlapped. Here are my scarfs overlapped and you can see the toe of the scarf is going onto the parent bar but I've got plenty of thickness there to help me with my weld.
Once you have a couple of individual units made, your third piece is going to link to make a, a building block of three. Make the scarves, slip the two pieces of chain on, then you're going to have to go to the bic and make your bend and then come back and make the weld. We have 20 minutes to make our length of chain. The minimum you can do is three links for a length. I would suggest you've got a little bit of time left, make a fourth link and try and get four links out of your 20 minutes. If you're doing really well for time, make another individual link and then maybe try and put those together for a group of five. If you're in the open category, I'm thinking you probably need to make two groups of three and then group those together to make a group of seven. If you intend to enter the um, chain making competition, you might consider making a pair of tongs to hold the chain easily, shall we say. These jaws were made by laying off one inch of material and I draw, drew them down to a taper approximately 5 8 by let's say a fat 16th. At that stage I bent the last 5 8 or so out at about 120 degrees and with my hot chisel, just cut a groove in there ready to accept a bit of square bar when I put them together that will accommodate the round bar of the chain. At this stage I have the tongs assembled and I'm just going to make sure that the two hot cut chisel marks are um, about aligned and they are reasonably. So now I'm going to pop in a bit of 3 8 and I use an anvil block and I'm just going to Working from both sides, set that down. I've trued both jaws up on the anvil block and now I need to start creating a half round on each jaw. 
I'm just going to come here to the anvil and just knock that round. That'll go for the best that you can possibly get. I'm going to put a piece of round stock in there and then we'll tidy it up. But do get the flavour so you can grip the round stock. As we go into the final adjustment of the jaws, what I would like is for the jaws to grip with a gap back here so that it's not high centred on the rear of the boss. So I'm going to adjust the jaws with a spacer inside and then I'm going to use the fit and finish coming here supporting the back of the curve on this side as I hit this side, turn it over and do the same with that one and then I can take the spacer out and I've got a good gap in there and positive grip onto my piece of chain or bar stock. As I'm adjusting the jaws I'm going to slip a, a little spacer here between the reins so I don't close that because I'm taking a heat, a major heat here at the jaw assembly and it'd be easy for me to squeeze those reins closed only to have to open them later. So I'm just putting a little spacer in there just to keep them apart while I work. In order to protect the jaw assembly, especially my half round jaws, I'm probably going to come into the vise vertically as I adjust the reins. Not a big problem, just so long as I'm aware of it going into the adjustment stage. <laughs> 